This video is the second in the series and will demonstrate how to create and insert block instances, doors and windows that will add detail to your current floor plan. We're going to begin with a new file. Make sure your units are in inches and your other presets are established, and then we can begin. First, we want to begin drawing a window unit that we need. We are going to use the rectangle tool, so type in REC. Choose a point for the first corner, then type in D so we can specify the dimensions. It will prompt you for the length, which will be 36 inches, and then the width, 6 inches, and then allow you to choose which orientation you want to place it at. Once we have the outline where our window will be, we are going to explode. We're going to explode our rectangle which is the opposite of join and we'll make them into individual lines. Then we're going to offset each of the end lines in two inches to be the window frame. Then we're going to use our midpoint O-snap to draw a line from the center of each of the window frames. Thinking ahead to creating our block, we want these two lines to read as the wall below our window, but we want the frame to read a little differently. In order to make that happen, we need to split these lines where they intersect with your window frame. Type in BR for break. We want to select our line. Then we're going to choose the first point option by clicking here or typing F. We're going to turn our O snaps off, or turn on endpoint on rather, and then we're going to choose right here where it intersects. And then it says specify second breakpoint, and we're just going to type the at symbol and hit enter. Do that for all four breaks. Once our geometry is drawn, we want to go up to the ribbon tool and create our block. We are going to name it Window, and we're going to select our objects. Make sure your block unit is in inches, and hit OK. Now we want to change the layers of some of the lines. These two lines signify the wall below, so let's go up to Layers, and make a new layer called A Wall Below. And let's change that color index to number 151. You should always initially create your blocks on layer 0. Blocks made on layer 0 adapt to the adjustments of the layer that you move them to, but if you create a block on a layer other than 0, it will maintain the attributes of the original layer even if you move it later. But now we want to change the layer of the two outer lines to wall below so their line weight is less pronounced when we plot it. Now it will be important to have windows of varying length and width, so we're going to add some basic parameters that we will be able to define and change within our file. Highlight your objects. Then go to Block Editor and choose Auto Constrain. Then choose Linear Dimension and choose each end of our window width. Drag that dimension out and then we're going to relabel it Width. Then do the same for the wall thickness. as well as the frame width. Our last two dimensional constraints are going to be dependent variables. We want the frames of the window to be equal to each other, so we're going to call this one, when we make its dimension,
frame width 2 and instead of 2 inches we are going to set it equal to frame width so that changing one changes both of them. Similarly we want to make the midline of the window to fall at the midpoint of the wall always and be dependent upon that. So we're going to call this midline and we're going to set it equal to wall thickness over 2. And there we have our window block. Hit close here and then we want to save changes and edit block editor. From here we can change the dimensions of our window block by selecting it then going to properties and scrolling down to custom where we can change the width or wall thickness or frame width of our window. Now let's make a door block. We're going to start with another rectangle so do the same thing making this one 2 inches by 36 inches. Then we're going to draw a door swing, an arc, shortcut A, and we're going to choose the center option. Choose one end of your door, then specify the radius by choosing the other end of your door, and then hold shift to make it a clean 90 degree arc. Again, we are going to create new block and select our objects. This one we are going to name door single. Make sure your block unit is inches and hit OK. Once you get to this screen, we are going to auto constrain again but this time we are only going to select the rectangle of the door and not include the arc. Then we want to put in our linear dimensions of door thickness and door width. If you look next to aligned, you see a radius tool. So choose that, select our arc, and drag out a radius dimension. This radius we are going to make equal to the door width so that our door swing is always the width of our door. We want to change the color of our door swing to color number 151 and then your door block is complete. Blocks are an excellent idea for any reoccurring object in a file, from doors to furniture to sinks and showers. You can copy and paste blocks into any file from the original file, and even pull them into Rhino, though they may lose their parametric abilities. Once your blocks are created, there are several ways to manipulate them besides changing their dimensions. You can mirror a block, MI, by simply choosing your block hitting enter, and then defining the axis around which you'd like to mirror it. Be sure to specify whether you want it to be a copy or whether you want it to erase the original. You can also rotate. Selecting your object, choosing a base point, and then choosing the rotation. And of course, you can always copy and move. It is also possible to add hatching which is essentially a patterned fill. BH is the shortcut and you just choose an internal point of a shape that you'd like to fill. Type T or choose settings and you can change the pattern, the scale and density, and you can even specify the origin in case you have some sort of tiling that needs to be aligned with an edge or a corner. You can change the color and customize all sorts of fills. Insert your blocks into your file 
by copy and pasting and adjusting them in as necessary. Once you've done this, your file should be nearing completion and the last tutorial will be instructing how to set up a layout, scale, and plot to PDF.